Welcome to Digital Asset News, take the top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets, and bring them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, we've got some bearish news. First up, a shock survey suggests that most investors think Bitcoin won't top 50K by 2030. I want to take a look at what's going on here and try to debunk some of the things that these people are worried about also. Bitcoin U.S. Senate. Republican Senator says Bitcoin can act as a store of value. And the new senator from Wyoming really lays down a fantastic reason as to what Bitcoin can do, and she really understands. Stands. And a quick little snippet about Bitcoin maybe hitting a wall of profit takers around 19.5. So we'll get to what's going on in the market, but first we have to do the 12 days of Christmas. So the 14th is behind us. We've already drawn four winners for the stone book. Congratulations to everybody. I think they've all contacted me so far. So we will get your stone books out ASAP. Now today is the 15th and we're going to do a nice little drawing of our second Ledger Nano X. We've already done the drawing or done the video for today for the first Ledger Nano. And let's just take a look at what it was. So this one was actually pretty funny. So we did a quick video about uh, PayPal and I talked about it as like the most bullish video I've ever done on Bitcoin. It really was. It was amazing about what's going on, not just with PayPal, but what's going on with the stock prices and how I believe that institutions and really corporations are going to start to FOMO in. So in that video, I had people do two things. First, I had them just to comment on uh, just to say ledger and the second thing I want to do was just to say one kind of phrase that I usually use on this channel <laughs> I have to, I, gotta, I gotta tell you I gotta tell you uh, that's one of them uh, that it was pretty funny actually to take a look at all the different comments and I'm just gonna today when we did the uh, nano ledger I mean the uh, stone book I went all the way down to the very uh, bottom so today I'm gonna go to the very top so let's just flip down uh, Courtney Smith, congratulations, you are the winner. So she put Ledger and then watch out, XRP pegged the quarter. One, that's pretty funny. One of my favorite jokes, now I can't say it because uh, XRP is at like 49 cents, which sucks. But uh, yeah, that was it. And I have to tell you, <laughs> gotta stop saying it. But it is funny when I just take a look at all the things that I say all the time, Tether, who cares? It's just a Tuesday in crypto land. Uh, Tether's Tether, <laughs> I want a Ledger. It rhymes pretty good. Potato coin, potato foot. Oh, that's classic. Potato foot coin, very penny. So uh, today, the same thing. Uh, what I'm gonna have you do is just comment ledger and just call out one of the uh, usual phrases that I say, and then I will do the drawing tomorrow uh, for tomorrow's video. So again, uh, to Courtney Smith, congratulations. If you would be so kind, just reach out to me either on Twitter if you follow me at News Asset, or just go to danteacherscrypto.com, click on the contact button and then send me your email and we'll verify it and we'll send you out your Nano Ledger X. So again, I want to say thank you to uh, Nano Ledger for supporting this uh, giveaway. If you are still looking for a ledger, take a look in the description of this video if you don't win today and uh, go ahead and pick one up uh, for 20% off. So all right, let's go on the market. So today it is December 15th and we've got, uh, what is it, Ryan, 12, 12 p.m.? High noon, El Paso, Texas time. So Bitcoin, 19.5. And we're going to go over this specific article that says that there is a sell wall uh, at 19.5. So we'll see if we can uh, bust through that. I don't know. But it's up almost 2%. That's great. Ethereum at 590. I like to see that. XRP, watch out, 47 cents. And after that spark snapshot, it did uh, take a little bit of a tumble. And we'll see if it can rebound up to whatever people think is going to go you know a dollar five hundred dollars i don't know tethers tether nobody cares uh, bitcoin cash wow hey bitcoin wow bitcoin cash is up nine percent holy smokes i didn't i never look at the prices before i do the video i just pull up coin gecko so it's always surprise when i say like i'm surprised like i'm surprised i it always shocks me when i'm like look at the prices 6.4 for the polka dot and that's pretty good 3.2 for bitcoin s i no, I, I don't know why it's in the top 20. Someone explain it to me. 2.4 for NEM. NEM's always up there. And then OKB 3.5. So I'm going to do the top 20. If your coin is in the top 20, well, maybe you should work harder to get there so I can cover it. All right. So that's uh, the price in uh, dollars. Let's see how it would do if you would have done this in uh, Bitcoin. So we'd like to take a look at this because we want to see if the alts are competing with Bitcoin. So if you would have invested just in Bitcoin, you'd have been okay. Ethereum would have down by 0.6, not a big deal. XRP, four and a half down, Tether, that's nah, whatever. Bitcoin Cash, you would have been up big. And this is one of those things, you know, Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash. Well, if you would invest in Bitcoin Cash, you'd have been up uh, pretty tremendously. Uh, another one, 4.6 for Polkadot, 1.5 for Bitcoin SV, eh. 0.8 for NAM, 1.8, and then down you go, 1.4, 3.0, whatever. 
All right, so really it just comes out of this. Um, Bitcoin's not the end all be all. And we're gonna talk about my portfolio, why I've invested in certain things. And uh, I do think Bitcoin's gonna do very well, but uh, as always, diversify. All right, let's jump into today's top stories. First off, this was uh, kind of concerning. I took a look at this and uh, it was a survey and people that were questioned were like, yeah, Bitcoin's maybe 50K by 2030. And actually more people thought, well, not more people, but a lot of people thought that Bitcoin's going to go to 1,000 in 2030, which I thought was crazy. But uh, let's let's take a look. So this was a survey done by Genesis Mining, and this was uh, it was a thousand current and former U.S. based Bitcoin investors. So they all been in the U.S. and they all had uh, invested in Bitcoin. But remember, it is a thousand people. But that's a that, that's a pretty good sample size. It kind of gives you the the the, the lay of the land about what people would actually think. Anyhow, two thirds believe Bitcoin is a better long term store of value than the dollar. So when we first started talking about this, you really have to you know take a look at where's people's uh, thought processes as far as Bitcoin. Do they think it's like just a crazy, you know, uh, ridiculous type of investment? I don't think they would because they're, you know, being surveyed by Genesis Mining. And then where do they think it's actually going to go? Uh, half of respondents believe Bitcoin will beat out gold, real estate, and the stock market over five to 10 years. So these are people who, you know, a lot of them think it's going to do pretty well. But here's what they said. Only 17% of those surveys predicted Bitcoin's price would exceed 50,000 by 2030. I'm here to tell you, I think Bitcoin's price will exceed 50,000 by 2021. And my prediction, it's very conservative, I think it's around 150,000, between 100 and 150,000. I know some people will say, it's gonna be 300, it's gonna be 500,000. Sure, whatever. I mean, if it is, I'll, I'll be I'll be glad to be wrong, trust me. Uh, but that's where I, where I say it. But these people are like, no, no, uh, 50 grand by 2030. The question is why? Why do they think that? So in total, 50.1% of respondents estimate that Bitcoin will be worth 20,000 or less by 2030. And then one third predict the price will be 10,000 or less and almost 12% <laughs> think it's gonna be below a thousand. Okay, see, that's just it. That's This is what makes the whole world go round. Differences of opinions. And you can see that in the comment section of every one of my videos. There are a lot of people who have a lot of different, uh, you know, thought process as far as what can, is going to happen in, in the cryptocurrency digital asset world. And uh, I welcome all those opinions because that's kind of where we kind of find that sweet spot of where people believe it's actually going to be. So the real question again comes down to why. Why do they think that? What are they scared about? And I can understand it because what they expect is Bitcoin to be hindered by regulations. That's the first thing. And then a lot of them are one fifth uh, anticipated outright bans on crypto from government. So I wanna break these two down first, then we'll go to the other ones. But when you talk about hindered by regulations, yes, they see Bitcoin can't be hindered by regulations. Exchanges can be hindered by regulations, but Bitcoin itself, again, you have to shut down the whole internet because there's over 10,000 nodes uh, of computers across the world. So good luck shutting that down or regulating that or re you know regulating the internet per se. That's not gonna happen, but exchanges, yes, they could. And like I've always talked about, you can have one country, let's take America, they say, you know what, exchanges, no more cryptocurrency, which would be crazy. I mean, come on. But like, let's just say they do. No more cryptocurrency. We, we, we can't have that. I mean, look, U.S. back in the 30s banned gold. They pretty much collected all the gold. And that's uh, exactly what happened. It's a historical fact. And these are one of the things that uh, I think is like a dark spot of America. So when they have something like that, could it happen? Sure. Will it happen? Probably not. But I mean, who knows? But if they do that, other countries are going to say to themselves, well, great. Well, we know where this is all going. So we are happy that you did that because we'll allow you over here. And then, of course, you can do a VPN and you can transact over there and do whatever you want to. So if America does that, I first of all, I think they will because that'd be stupid. And then they would fall way, way behind in the, in the digital asset race. And then, of course, the other countries can go, well, we're going to use Bitcoin and we're going to sidestep uh, all your sanctions because... <laughs> We're not going to use the U.S. dollar as a world reserve currency. And I know China and Russia are just, you know, chomping at the bit to not have that happen. So that would be a bad idea. I mean, I guess it kind of fits in, in, in both of those, hindered by regulations and bans on crypto. So I guess if I really took a step back and talked about hindered by regulations, I mean, look, you have New York State, which has some of the highest regulations uh, that we have in, in the United States, and people are still able to get Bitcoin. They can't get a lot of other things like Cardano. Believe me, I, I see it. I, I think it's going to be more down to the case of the altcoins 
having the issue as opposed to Bitcoin. That's how I see it. And the next part is 70% of non-bullish respondents expect another crypto or a central bank issued digital currency will capture a dominant market share and supersede Bitcoin. And I would have said yes to this. I would have said yes to this if America had picked up the pace and years ago in 2017 started to go, you know what, we're going to do a CBDC and we're going to roll this out as fast as possible because we see where things are going. But they didn't and they lost momentum. And now people are going to get used to something. They're going to use to be being able to use PayPal. They're going to be able to be used to use other banks and maybe some of their stable coins. But I think really PayPal is going to be the big one because they're going to be able to purchase different assets, also going to be able to purchase different things on the manufacturers or on the different websites, all the merchants, which is 28 million plus around the whole PayPal ecosystem. So if that happens, which it will in Q1 2021, people are going to use that and they're like, why would we go back to using uh, fiat and a digital dollar? Uh, because this stuff works just great. Oh, and guess what else it works great for? Uh, it actually appreciates. So uh, I know with the dollar, you guys keep printing that and the actual purchasing power goes down. I think I'm going to stick with uh, what I got right now. The flip side of that is I think there's a problem with when people use PayPal too much and they get used to the paper Bitcoin. That's why they need to understand the whole ramifications of using Bitcoin and where the actual power lies. The power doesn't lie in the centralization. The power lies in the decentralization of this cryptocurrency. And hopefully they figure it out. I got a great uh, website, Dandy's Crypto. They can learn all about it, but uh, hey, I can only do so much. And the next one, just talk about how the hype will die down and it'll, and there's not like a real practical use case for Bitcoin. So I'll, st I'll talk to the, the practical use for Bitcoin. Um, there is no practical use. It's a store of value and that's about it. It's just like gold. And people say, oh, well, we can put that in jewelry and so on and so forth. Sure, but that's not what people buy gold for. People buy gold for as a store of value and they, they just hoard it and they sometimes they trade it, but mostly they just hang on to it because they don't want to have some kind of like catast catastrophic event. And that's fine. And that's, what, that's where the value comes from because they take it, they hoard it, they don't sell it, and and the price goes up. Great. Same thing's going to be with Bitcoin. They're going to hold it as a store of value. People aren't going to spend it that much. That's just the way it is. That's why I think PayPal did what they did. Bitcoin, Bitcoin Cash, Litecoin, and Ethereum, because they know that people aren't going to pay, aren't going to pay uh, for Bitcoin so much. And then as far as the, the hype cycles, we talked about this yesterday. This is on my Twitter account. I think I pinned it to the very top, so you can find it pretty simple. But as far as hype cycles, it really goes comes down to four things. Having, all-time high, dip, reset, or space. So 2012, having, all-time high, dip, spacer. 2016, having, all-time high, dip, space. 2020, having, all-time high, dip in 2022 and then spacer 2023. So it's the same thing that's been going on, but it's only been getting more and more and more. I mean, if we take a look at Bitcoin, the price just goes up. I mean, the all time high in uh, 2013, it was about a thousand all time high in 2017 was about 20,000. That's about 20 X. So in 2020, I mean, who knows? Again, I always think it's going to be a 10 X or so maybe a hundred grand, maybe 200 grand, but I think it's around 150,000. So as far as hype cycles, I don't see that actually happening. So let me know what you think in the comments section. Let's move on to our next piece.